everybody. Welcome to Seattle Refined. I'm Guard Swanson. It is Friday, and we are here to kick this weekend off in refined style. Coming up, grab the chips and dip. Football season is officially here. The games that will have us screaming loud this weekend. Plus, Christmas in September with megastar Mariah Carey. Refined was there when she revealed her sweet, sweet fantasy. Then, drum roll, please. How about this? Dick's driving. They picked their next location, and South King County fans can't wait to chow down. And my inner kid is freaking out. Look at this thing here. It's the biggest bouncy house in the world, and it's now just a short drive away. Look at those kids having some fun. All right, starting things off, of course, we got managing editor Britt Thorson with us, and another big weekend upon us. Another big weekend, a big sports weekend upon it. It's your time to shine. Yeah, uh, you're a Husky fan, right? Of course. Oh, you got to love the dogs. And there are the doggies. Oh, they got a big game coming tomorrow. Kickoff 5 o'clock against Montana. A lot of fans are going to be there. And the Huskies, and Britt, I don't even think there's a point spread on this. I couldn't find one anywhere. But the dogs <laughs> should have no problem with the Grizz. But that's uh, not the only team we've got playing this weekend, right? Uh, let me think. Uh, uh, hmm. Who's the team that everyone's obsessed with in this city? Yeah, the Seahawks on the road with Green Bay. And this is going to be a tough one. The Hawks go into uh, Lambeau Field. They are three-point underdogs. They're getting Aaron Rodgers right here from a couple of years ago. But this is, this is a very tough opener on the road for the Seahawks. But you know what? Seahawks are good again this year. The offensive line looks pretty good. And, of course, when you got Russell Wilson at the helm, anything can happen. And, and I have to say, I'm not a big, you know, I don't know a lot about football, yeah. but what I do know is that this is the opener. This is the first real season game, right? Yeah, we've had four preseason games, right. which are always kind of fun yeah, to watch, yeah, yeah, yeah. but now we got the big one. The big Sunday, one. Sunday, 125 one kickoff. This is the one that counts. Yeah, and you have a big bachelor announcement, yes, right? Yes, it's what we've all, well, maybe not all of us, it's what we've been waiting for for months. We finally know who the next bachelor will be, and the decision has kind of shocked fans. Good Morning America announced that it'll be Ari Lukendik Jr. If that name doesn't sound familiar, or if I butchered it. I really, think it was Lion Dyke. Like, I mean, like, what, whichever one. <laughs> it's probably because I have no idea who this person is. It's Emily Maynard's season in 2012. He's a professional car drive, car race driver from Arizona, and he told GMA that Bachelor producers reached out to him not too long ago. Where were you when you got the call? Uh, I was at home, and uh, it was pretty recent, and we've kept in touch over the last few years, but this, this just fit perfect. The timing of this really fit for me. This decision shocked fans because everyone thought someone from Rachel's season, duh, was going to be chosen, like Peter or Dean, but rumor has it the producers had kind of a tough time locking someone down. Yeah, so they grab... Ari Leyendijk off the racetrack, and he's going to yeah. be the next Bachelor? Yeah, and apologies out to Ari. Honestly, dude, I have no idea who you are. I'm sure you're going to be a great season, but I've only started watching The Bachelor. Race fans want to run you over right now. <laughs> yes, I know. They're all coming for me. Team Ari is coming for me. I apologize. I probably will love him. Well, but. speaking of teams, doesn't Mariah Carey have, like, a team of people that follow her everywhere? Hair, makeup. makeup. And it's a little annoying for people. And that's not just the, the, the team. Her actual fan base is called The Lambs. She calls them her lambs. <laughs> oh, my God. But the reason we're talking about the mega superstars because she was just a hop skip and a jump away earlier this week over in Bellevue's Sugar Factory which is their new um, big candy kind of like extraordinaire yeah. in uh, the shops at Braver and she came um, she saw she walked she walked the little mini red carpet and she's got this new line out right now that's called Mariah Carey Christmas Factory which is yeah. why you see her with Santa and she was late for this event wasn't she was she? a little bit late but she wasn't a, she wasn't a a lot late and she's used to she's usually like at least you know two hours late she was only one hour late to this so I'm gonna give her a little bit of a break but um, one of the reasons she was in town was that she was the co-star mm -hmm. of this big um, all the hits performance that she and Lionel Richie did yeah. and they actually were playing the key arena on Tuesday night oh, uh, right nice. before this event and it was awesome here are a couple shots of Lionel we were actually there at the concert Mariah kind of opened she went on for about an hour and then Lionel finished the show off with another couple hours of hello. Oh, I know. I love Lionel Richie. How do you Same. not like Lionel Richie? And Mariah Carey, she's still belting it out at her she age. She is, she's and I will say, good. I have to say this. Everyone talks about how she lip syncs. She did not lip sync. Really? I, I was there on Tuesday night. She was not lip syncing. She was actually singing, and she still has a great voice. She sounded good. I'm going to go on record. She still has a great voice. All right. With all this music, you know, I'm, get, I'm getting kind of hungry. Yeah, it's a little, yeah. is, it, is it time you for a burger? Yeah, you, well, you know what? 
25 years ago, I moved here, and everybody said, you got to go to Dick's Burgers. You gotta, I, it took me a year to get to a Dick's Burger joint, and I went up there, and I had the fries, I had the burger, I had the milkshake, and you know what? I was pleasantly pleased. Yeah, well, if it took you a year, that means you don't have your priorities <laughs> yeah, really as straight as you should. But if you are watching from Kent, and you don't already know this news, we have great news for you. Dick's is coming your way. They just announced that their seventh location is going to be down in Kent, just about five miles south of SeaTac. Um, again, it's their seventh location. And honestly, like, just when you thought Kent couldn't get any better. And, and you know what's funny about Dick's? They were only a cash business forever. And then yeah. just recently, within yeah. the last year, I think, they decided, yeah. if you have a debit card, or a, we take credit cards now. Which is awesome, because I don't know about you, but I literally never have cash on me. I, I mean, always I will, have cash. I'm will, the opposite. Yeah, I will charge, like, a $1, like, popsicle to yeah. my card. I'm what, that girl. What's your favorite thing at Dick's? Real quick. Um, just a plain burger. Just a plain burger? Yeah, the you don't, plain you don't burger. get the Dick's Deluxe? No, I usually, like, if I'm going to go Deluxe with something, I'm going to go Deluxe with my milkshake. And I'm going to get, like, you know, like, two of them. Right. So I feel like if I get two milkshakes and one burger, yeah. it's different than if I got the Deluxe and then one milkshake. Is anyone, anyone mm. on that with me? Yeah. Uh, I love their milkshakes, too. Yeah. All right, what's, what's this rare beef thing, speaking of burgers? Oh, my gosh, speaking of burgers, I doubt that this is the beef that Dick's is using because they would go broke in two seconds. A local restaurant called Metropolitan Grill is now the second restaurant in the entire United United States to serve Sanuki Wagyu olive beef. Look at it right there. Now, if you are wondering why this is so rare and special, oh, it's because so it comes from a special cattle farm in Japan, really? and the cows are fed the remains of pressed olives. That's so it? They've got like an olive-only diet, and so then it makes their meat... It's like having you mean like this, a martini like, olive or a black olive? Yeah, they just, only drink martinis. They just got a whole farm <laughs> of drunk cows over there. It's a martini crazy. would go with that meal right there. I'm just <laughs> telling you. Anyway, but you have to pay up if you want that at Metropolitan Grill. Five ounces will cost you 135 bucks. There you go. All right. Our Reeves Club keeps jamming, doesn't it? It keeps jamming. And for September, we are reading George and Lizzie by local author Nancy Pearl. In her debut novel, she tells the story of the title couple, Shocker, George and Lizzie, who have been together for more than a decade. When Nancy Pearl came on the show and joined us last week, she explained just how those characters came to her. Th these two characters, George and Lizzie, came to me one night while I was lying in bed trying to fall asleep. And all, I'm not kidding. I never thought I would write a novel. I mean, I'd written these nonfiction books about good books to read. But George came into my head. I mean, I knew who he was. I knew his name was George. Lizzie came into my head. I knew where they met. They met at a bowling alley in Ann Arbor, Michigan. Yeah. I knew how they met. I mean, the specific, very funny circumstances. We would absolutely love for you to join Refined Reads. You can sign up at seattlerefined.com slash refined reads. And if you haven't been to a discussion yet, you definitely don't want to miss our next one because author Nancy Pearl will be joining us herself. It's set for September 29th at University Bookstore. Yeah, our producer, Kelly Blake, she's all proud of herself because we took a plane up to uh, Lopez Island and she was reading it and she finished it. Oh. Kelly, I haven't even started yet, so she's already literally a book ahead of me. I'm coming for you, Kelly. All right, let's talk about <laughs> documenting love. Let's. So this is our weekly um, uh, kind of little profile on a local couple who is living and loving life together in Seattle. And here's why I want to talk about this couple is because I want to give a little bit of a shout out to everyone out there struggling in the online dating game, myself included. This is really? like a pep talk for us. This is Jen and JP. They met on OKCupid. Okay Hmm. And they are engaged to be married. So you guys, it does happen. Don't worry about it. And here's the coolest part. Do you want to know where JP proposed to Jen? I'm going to guess the market. No, that, that <laughs> would be that would be good, but it's not. It was at Harry Potter Land in Orlando. Really? Isn't that awesome? Okay, so I'm a huge Harry Potter nerd, so that would be like a dream come true. Apparently, she was at the wand shop, and she opened up a, a wand. Are you just like eye rolling right now? I, mean, uh, I think it's uh, the coolest uh, thing uh, ever. Really? Are there any Harry Potter fans out there that thought thinks this would be awesome? And you get your wand from Ollivander's wand shop. You open up the wand case, and there's a ring and a wand inside. I don't know which one I'd be more excited about. Uh, to me, I have no interest in any of that. Oh, get out of here. <laughs> Harry Potter's coming for you. Ari's coming for me, and Harry Potter's coming for you. All right, all right. Let's bounce off that subject and get to a really <laughs> cool subject, because if you have kids or if you're an adult, this next thing might be the neatest thing around. I was going to say, do I have to have kids? Because I'm really excited so. about it just by itself. So we are um, home to... 
one of the actually not one of the largest bounce house in the world this weekend and this weekend only in Tacoma. <laughs> it's called the Big Bounce. It's 10,000 square feet, 32 Dang. feet tall, and it's in Kelly Farms in Tacoma literally only this weekend, September 8th to the 10th. You've got to check it out. The world's look largest bounce house. Doesn't that look incredible? It looks a but look, ton okay, of fun. That looks like there are only kids down there. I feel like what? Like what oh, if no. I showed up? Would that no, be bad? There's no weight limit. Get on that thing and start bouncing oh, around. Now that you brought up the weight limit thing, what if I get on there and I pop the You're whole thing? You're not going to do that. You look terrific. Oh, All right, Britt. Thank Scar. you so much. All right. <laughs> now we're going to bounce out of here for just a couple of minutes. Seattle Refine is just getting started. I'm going to step out for just a minute, but Britt, she's coming back with what's being called the fiercest fashion competition in the Northwest. We have a very special guest in the studio to dish on this awesome event. Welcome back to Seattle Refined. I'm Britt Thorson. Now, Gard will be back in just a minute, but right now, I'm taking over and sitting down with one of our favorite Bachelorette alums, Desiree Hartsock Siegfried. Hi, Des. Hi. So I haven't seen you much this week, this whole summer, <laughs> because you've been over in Bellevue for Bellevue Fashion Week, watching the whole process of the Independent Designer Runway Show. Yep, it's been like our very own Project Runway right, in Bellevue. Right, right here in Bellevue. So tell me a little bit about what we've got going on here. Basically, we have a whole bunch of designers who have been picked. They had to apply. It was a whole rigorous process, and they've had, what, about six Six months to make up ten yeah. different outfits. Yeah, they've had about six months and to create a collection of about ten pieces. And it's been a lot of fun going through the process with them, seeing them from their concept to the designs and seeing them, you know, on the models is gonna be incredible. And it really is a very awesome legit runway show that it's a great opportunity for new designers and um, you never know which designers might really blow everyone away. Well, and the whole culmination of this thing is the Independent Designer Runway Show, which actually is happening here in the next couple weeks. And I can't even imagine what it'll be like for you to see there, to be there and see it, because you saw these people with literally just like a sketch on a piece of paper. Yeah, I mean, that's what I live for, and that's what I love is seeing um, these, they're so creative and they're so talented, and then being able to see their sketch come to fruitation like on the runway show it's going to be incredible it's unreal and i have to say like you know here in seattle we get a lot of flack about not really being a fashionable city <laughs> right everyone makes fun of us all wearing I, our uggs i mean and we stuff. do like our comfort we do I, we, we do but, but this is the real deal and if you're a yeah. fashion guru you kind of have to come to this designer runway show because this is like the biggest new york style show that we really have around here Absolutely. lights cameras action i mean people walking the runway it's going to be kind of incredible and for these designers I mean, you've had your moment in the spotlight. This is their moment yes. in the spotlight, too, where this is like they're walking for the chance at $5,000. It's like their big break. It is and their big it's, break. It's going to be really great to watch and see who wins yeah. because they are then able to create even more looks. And yeah. it's a really big opportunity, and I just hope that people do attend and um, get to see how incredible yeah. these designers are. We're all gonna be there. You have to come and join us. It's gonna be outstanding. We have all of the information you could possibly want on our website. And now I have to segue, Des, because you know so much about fashion. One of the reasons we have you helping out with Bellevue Fashion Week is because you've got a line yourself coming yeah, out. So I've been in design pretty much my whole life, but um, I'm finally, I'm really excited because I'm finally doing my own debut like wedding gown collection. And so that that I will be um, showcasing in October in New York, so I'm really excited about that. So you've been that. pretty busy. I've been really busy. Along with that and my 10-month-old, I'm like, I was gonna I'm say, really I was just going to ask, so the, the job that is totally a job, but like, so, tell me about Asher. Oh, Asher is wonderful. He's walking around <laughs> over somewhere. here. He's behind the camera somewhere. <laughs> yeah, but it's been wonderful. You know, it's been... It's been nice to have the flexibility to juggle both. It's definitely extremely hard to juggle both, but I, it's like I had Asher and now I'm having, you know, I get to like, and see this other baby yeah, of mine yeah. grow and so that's all I'm, excited. Excited. And I'm not just saying this because you're here and like right in front of my face but I've seen a lot of babies I've been around the block and seen a lot of babies and let me tell you your baby is so cute thank I you I can't get over it independent designer runway show is just in a couple weeks we have tickets online seattlerefined.com see you there all right there's more Seattle Refined still ahead coming up guard will be back with behind the scenes look at an exciting new festival getting ready to open this weekend in Seattle don't go anywhere
Welcome back to Seattle Refined in our special TGIF edition. It is a first for Seattle. Starting this weekend, you can check out our sponsors. The MexAm Northwest Festival is a, it is a 10-day celebration about all things Mexico and bringing modern Mexico to the Northwest. And joining me now to talk more about the festival is artist Fulgencio Lassos. And nice to have you on board, sir. Okay, buenos dias. Th yeah, thank you. And this is, this is kind of a big deal, not only for you, but for really the entire region, right? Yeah. Yeah, I think uh, it's very important in this time now because we live in a very hard time now. Mm -hmm. um, so a lot of bad feelings and bad action about uh, anti-immigrants. So I think this is a good time to show be an artist how we uh, uh, contributed yeah. in this uh, community. And, and you're an artist. And what kind yeah. of what, what do you do? What kind of artistry? So I'm uh, I'm originally from Oaxaca, Mexico. I came here to Seattle in. 26, 26 years ago, and I'm doing uh, acrylic on canvas, and I'm full, uh, uh, a full-time artist. So Yeah, and, and some of your work will be presented at some point during the 10-day festival? Yeah, this is a group show, what we put together with the Mexican consulate. is uh, This is a good opportunity for the Latino community, uh, for the artist who is uh, immigrant and came uh, for so many years here in the Seattle area. And uh, so I think it's very important because sometimes in, in the past, uh, we don't have a lot of venues or a lot of opportunities where right. we can show the Latino art. So I think uh, I want to uh, uh, offer to the people can come and help us to promote this uh, and, and, exhibition. Yeah, and this is just a, a, a just a terrific opportunity for people in this region to go out and see what artists are doing from Mexico yep. or with uh, Hispanic descent, and it really embraces the whole community, doesn't it? Yeah, and also uh, trying to reject uh, and say no to this uh, bad time while we live in around mm -hmm. and right now you know so I think it's a good opportunity for the community to say no to the bad feeling what we uh, uh, in action that happening now with the uh, immigrant people right you know and, and, and it's, it's really good for uh, Mexican businesses here that are growing rapidly, right? Yeah, I think uh, in the business and the, especially in the culture, because I'm an artist, so, and so I want to say thank you to the, to the gallery that's going to be in the Manixon, uh, Manixon Park, the mm -hmm. Space Gallery. So to offer this opportunity to show this kind of work, you know, it's uh, seven artists. It's, uh, some of these artists are very established and well-known in the area. So, so it's a very good opportunity to show this work in different kind of technique and, right. and, and style of the different kind of artists. All right, will you do me a favor, and you can keep yeah. it kind of short. In Spanish, will you just welcome everybody to your big 10-day event? Yeah, los invitamos a todos, por favor, para que nos apoyen a, a festejar esta exposición de los inmigrantes eh, pintores mexicanos. All right, that sounds good. I yeah. want to go. Okay, so All right. I hope we can see you there, and uh, oh, I'm coming thank you for, for your sure. time, and uh, see you there. All right, thank you, sir. Okay, Appreciate your you. time. All right, and have okay. a spectacular event. A reminder, the festival runs September 10th through the 17th. Seattle Refine will be right back after this. We're just about finished with this episode of Seattle Refine. And as we end the show, here are some of our favorite photos and moments of the week. Have a great Friday and a weekend, everybody.